Okay, right. Hello, everyone, uh, and welcome to the 1.30 p.m. session in the developer and open source track. As a reminder to our in-world and web audience, you can view the full conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org and tweet your questions or comments to open at OpenSimCC with the hashtag OSCC14. So this hour, we are happy to introduce the Pure Development Panel moderated by myself, uh, Justin Clark Casey. Our panelist speakers today are uh, Jessica Leon, uh, who is the founder and project manager of the Phoenix uh, Firestorm Project Incorporated, a non-profit company with over 80 support staff and developers working under it. The project is responsible for developing the very popular Phoenix and Firestorm viewers used in Second Life and other virtual worlds. So I'm probably not doing this in order, <laughs> I just realized. Um, so now it's obviously Jessica in the middle there. Uh, to the left of Jessica is, uh, as you're looking on stage, is Nikki Perriam. Um, who is retired from the United States Army and ABB. Um, building the Kokua Viewer is his major hobby. Nikki believes that building the Kokua Viewer is good brain exercise, but then solitaire will sudoku. Um, Nikki lives in a rural area of Arkansas, I'm, I'm a Brit, I'm not saying this right, uh, in the USA. Arkansas, of course. Um, and to the right on the couch there, uh, we have uh, Liru Fears, who uh, is, a, is a long time singularity developer. Um, Liru Fears, um, and I'm probably not saying that right either, it's, it's probably Fires, not Fears, sorry. Um, stepped in fairly late on, um, so we're very happy to have, have her. Um, and hopefully later on, we'll also be joined by Cinder Biscuit, who I think is having some uh, connectivity problems right now. But, um, she has uh, she's worked on uh, quite a few viewers for a long time, including uh, Phoenix Firestorm, and currently um, companies are working on various other virtual world projects. Her goal is to see uh, the metaverse thriving on its own and burdened by corporate ownership. Unfortunately, um, I, I do want to say this, we were due to have Latif here today, but um, as many of you, as some of you may have seen, Latif isn't, um, hasn't been very well as he has blogged about at the moment, and unfortunately he can't join us, but I'm sure you'll all join me in, in hoping that he gets, um, he feels better soon. So, welcome everyone, um, and I don't think, uh, I don't think, unfortunately, Cinder has been able to rejoin us yet. Um, so, we're going to start. So, the format of this is basically, uh, I have a set of pre-prepared questions um, about various um, viewer-related topics, and of course, heavily, heavily related to OpenSim, as, uh, as you would imagine in this kind of thing. Um, and I'm going to, I'm basically going to work for you and ask the panelists to uh, talk about them in turn as, the, as they see fit for as long, well, um, not obviously as long as they like, because um, that would take the whole time, but, you know, at whatever uh, length they think is appropriate or, or as short as they like. And then after that, uh, as we get through the questions, I'm going to uh, open up for questions from the audience. So, um, let me just uh, get going here. Okay. The, uh, so the first thing really, um, Obviously, I'll introduce you there, but I, I would like to give everybody an opportunity to say a bit about themselves. So obviously, I've very likely missed something out or, uh, or something like that. So I'm just going to ask, in, in order here, from uh, Nikki and Nikki on the left here, um, could you introduce yourself? Or if you feel I've done it already, don't, don't worry about that. Maybe tell us a bit about the current state of, uh, of, of your viewer projects. So, so Nikki. Okay, what are the things that we're doing right now? Most recently done, we split off the OpenSim viewer completely as a new branch from um, Second Life. Uh, that was done due to some limitations that I was running into on trying to keep the uh, AIS V3 inventory and pipeline current with all of the OpenSim grids. The, uh, the newest viewers would, would work on some OpenSim grids and not others, and I haven't been able to resolve that. So I've made the decision to go ahead and split off as a separate branch and use uh, Second Life 378 as the base for that branch. And so I'm going to build forward from there. Uh, so Firestorm, um, we're kind of in, the, in a similar boat as uh, Nikki is with Kukua. Uh, we're in the process of merging uh, Linden Labs AI SB3, which uh, will um, more or less kick out legacy baking, um, but we're going to handle it. We're probably going to handle it a different way. I think what we're going to do is merge in AIS3 and then uh, reintegrate legacy baking um, 
after that. So we're in the process of, we're in a release cycle right now for our next release. Uh, it will not have AIS-3. Um, after that though, uh, we'll be handling that merge and then uh, dealing with things from there. Um, we have some, some challenges I can talk about more in depth as we go through this in that regard, but I'll pass it over to Liru. Okay, so I'm a little bit sick, so excuse my hoarse voice. Um, so I work on both Singularity Viewer and Alchemy Viewer, which is a new project. It's a V3, which like Cocoa and uh, Firestorm, it is, uh, it's using the new interface. Um, there's not much to say for the OpenSim side yet, but we are planning to develop a whole suite so that OpenSim connectivity can be easily ported to many viewers, no matter what platform they are using. As for the singularity side, well, everything is going pretty well. We don't have to worry about the uh, merges with upstream. We pick what we need, and basically that's it. So yeah, I guess that's it, since Sanjay is not here and the team is out. Just moving on to kind of like question one here. So actually, this I think relates about what you've just been talking about with uh, things like big data avatars. But the first question I wanted to kind of ask you is that is Open Simulator is this Open Simulator becoming harder or easier to support? And in that context, what needs to be improved to uh, to have Open Simulator support work with your viewers better? So, so Nikki, if if you'd care to start. Yes, I think it is getting harder to support, uh, but I don't think it's all good to hold down. It's just the operation of the, the projects as they mature. The more you put in it, the more it's harder to maintain and put in new stuff. And I don't know what to do to improve that particular situation because you can't just stop. You've got to move forward with all of it. I'll move this on, on over to Jessica. Yeah, um, I have some kind of unique challenges. I mean, obviously the, the coding challenges, especially as the lab progresses forward. Um, and then there's also, uh, I'm faced with um, human resources challenges. And uh, I've been finding, despite that, you know, we've made, made a lot of efforts in the last two years to, um, you know, make Firestorm as um, compatible with OpenSim as we can, um, we've sort of been in, in many ways slighted by open sim administrators i guess um and um i mean one of the things that motivates developers is uh having your product used knowing that people are using your product seeing that it's being promoted um and we found that like places like um os grid for example firestorm is down at the bottom of the page um barely above you know 1.223 viewers that don't even support mesh um and uh, like, like even this conference for example um at, at no point anywhere was firestorm suggested to be used it was um singularity and uh, and that's fine but the problem with that is it becomes a challenge for me then to motivate my, my developers to do open sim work um because they they sort of feel like like they've been um you know, snubbed. Um, so I've got two challenges. One is obviously we've got the coding challenges, but we've also got the challenges of just trying to find developers who are willing to keep Firestorm compatible. So we're merging this AIS 3 into Firestorm, which needs to be done. Um, but uh, then I'm faced with, you know, how am I going to get legacy back, baking back into Firestorm and who am I going to get to do it? Um, uh, you know, we had uh, Cinder doing a lot of the work for uh, OpenSim for a while, and um, now I'm at a point where I don't have any developers left um, who really even have an interest in OpenSim, mainly because of, you know, it's impressions that we, we seem to get. Um, so, you know, we have to keep moving forward. I'm going to keep doing what I can uh, to keep things going. Um, I have to give a shout out to Littlefield. Uh, they've been fantastic and instrumental, and, and really that's the motivation we have right, right now is to keep things going for Littlefield and the EDUs, the educational sims. So we have a lot of uh, grids that use Firestorm for educational, and obviously we support them 100%. But, yeah, that's, that's our challenges right now. 
Okay, so I, I know there's probably quite quite a lot of comment on that, but maybe if I can go to Livu uh, and, and let, her, let us speak about this question as she runs first. And then we, we'll actually have to have a short disruption because the, the core quality is degraded. But Livu, if you could just uh, go on. Sorry, sorry, not go on. If you could just talk about this if you, if you want this uh, question. Well, there's not really much to say. I mean, I've been working with the people in IRSC on Open System Dev, and I've been... I found it really easy to support. There's new things or old things that need to be supported that I just mentioned. And so it's been pretty easy. I mean, there's what needed to improve last year was this communication, and that's really improved. Okay, Livy, can Okay, um, I actually just wanted to come back to um, just this point, just because I think it's a good, good point to, to talk about that. So uh, maybe we'll, we'll actually talk about this more at the end of just this. Is, um, okay, I, I think this okay, just is okay with that. Um, yeah. I think, I think there may be an impression. I think, and, and, I, and I'm not going to go on for this too long, I think maybe it's, it's partly communication, because I think this is a lot of open source projects has. Back any better. Okay, so I think <laughs> I, I think it would be uh, it would be useful to just maybe explore it a little bit further back as to um, as to the issues of uh, of of in the fire fire storm in particular. Um, I think. I mean, from my perspective, I, I, think that, I think that a lot of involved in the interviews as I think things is that um, maybe there's a, a small question, because I think you've seen there are quite a few people in the audience here who, who, who are very much um, Firestorm users and have their team in it. So, so maybe there's a bit of a communication thing. I think maybe, this is only my own personal feeling, which may or may not be correct, is that maybe it's a bit of a project culture, because my, my, my understanding is everything that Firestorm comes very much out of second life. And, there's a certain life culture of, of talking maybe in involved groups and talking about things involved. Whereas OpenSyn in particular, very much comes from the open source culture of having people in the IRC channels and talking in the IRC. And I've never been able to, to maybe I've not looked hard enough, I've never been able to locate any kind of active IRC channel for Firestorm, for instance. We don't, well, we actually, I mean, we do have an IRC, but uh, very few of us actually use it. Um, we used to get hold of the buses, you know, through, uh, you can contact me at any time through my email address, you know, like, I'm at phoenixgear.com. Um, Hello. Okay. Hey, does everybody hear me better now? Okay. I'm, am I actually in world yet? All right. Right. I'm gonna I'm gonna rewind back to uh, the start of what I was saying. Just uh, just to address some. Um, Jessica's point directly about about um, kind of like the open sim attitude. I, I think you know, and I don't want to speak for other people out there, right? Because I do have a certain view. You know, I'm very much head down in the server code, and um, 
and it doesn't always give me the best perspective. But you know, I think I think as we've seen from the chat, there are quite a few Firestorm users out there. Um, and and my my feeling, and I, I know you had a response to this, was that maybe there is a, to a certain extent a cultural thing, whereas Firestorm very much comes out of um, for Second Life and having you know communication occurring within Second Life or within I should say in the world. Whereas OpenSim is more the classic open source project of people very much communicating in IRC channels and mailing lists. And, and, you know, I've been interested in the past in joining, say, an IRC channel for Firestorm, but I haven't been able to find one. Maybe I didn't look hard enough or I didn't find one that was at all active. So I was, my theory was that maybe there's a cultural thing. And, and I know you, you had uh, some points to address that, Jessica. Yeah, so, um, you know, our contact has always been uh, basically through our emails or through InWorld um, or even through Skype. Uh, I, I think my Skype um, is pretty, pretty much well known to everybody. We don't use an IRC. We have an IRC channel, but, but we generally don't use it. And it, we're sort of faced with a, a bit of a unique problem in having too, too many users. Um, you know, 350,000 people on Firestorm, roughly. Uh, just in Second Life, I have no idea how many in, in, in OpenSim. And uh, with having an IRC channel, we, we're just flooded um, and end up not having any time to do anything else. Whereas at least if people contact me through email, um, you know, I, I, can, I can kind of structure that. And for those of you, it's jessica.lion at phoenixfever.com or admin at phoenixfever.com. And remember, any of our contacts are, can be found from our, uh, our website. I have a contacts page that lists every single person on the team. And communication is... Absolutely a big problem, I think, with uh, between Firestorm and OpenSim. Um, we, we have communications with Littlefield all the time. I talk to Walter regularly, um, and he keeps me posted on you know what's working and what isn't working. Um, and I, I have, in the past, made efforts to contact other uh, other grids, and, and grids do email me as well. But um, you know, it's never been very good. And I don't know that, you know, having an IRC channel is going to change that. Nobody reaches out to us is really what it is. Right, right. Well, maybe we can come back for a bit of discussion at the, at the, at the end. Um, but let me go on to the second question, first of all. So my second question here was really about hypergrid and the distributed metaverse. So, so it is that, do you think that a distributed metaverse is feasible and or desirable? You may not think it's a good idea. Um, and if you do think it's a, it's a desirable thing, what challenges do you think need to be overcome? I guess primarily I'm asking on the viewer's side, but also, you know, maybe the system as a whole. Um, so, so I don't know if I should be going to the same model all the time, but Nikki, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick on you first again. Um, do, you, do you kind of have any response or thoughts about that question? Uh, yes. I think that uh, it's desirable to have a distributed metaverse, but the practicality of it, uh, having so many different viewports into the different worlds or the way they operate is a challenge. It's getting to the point where it's almost have to tailor the viewer to the region or to the, I'm sorry, to the, uh, to the world of the region that you're going in. I don't have anything else to add now. Okay. Uh, just to identify if you have any thoughts on that. I have to agree with Ms. Nikki. I, I think it's it's absolutely necessary to move forward. But there's also, as Nikki said, there's so many different channels on how to get into virtual worlds. And having listened to the previous um, discussion uh, prior to Philip was, um, you know, a web-based plan. I, I think that's a fantastic idea. But there are a lot of challenges that need to get past that as well, like being able to build in world and having just even fundamentally advanced things like building inventory and various things. Um, I think a web-based viewer is really the way to go. And, but um, again, are you going to end up with a whole bunch of different versions of a web-based client? Yeah, yeah I, I think standards such as they are. You need to make a standard. And also I think... OpenSim admins have to collectively come together and agree on a, a path in one direction. I've heard um, at the um, OpenSim developer panel, um, you guys all seem to have different ideas of, of, of which way you want to go. I think I think OpenSim is going to need to find a way to agree on where they're going to go collectively, especially at this time when things in Second Life uh, are up in the air. We don't know what's going to happen with SL1. 
Right, right. Good point. And, and Leroy, do you, um, what thoughts do you kind of have about this topic? Well, um, I don't really have any thoughts that haven't been expressed already. I mean, I think that it's feasible and that it's desirable. But I feel like what we have right now is pretty good as is, except for um, I feel that um, Hypergrid could be a little bit better. Like there was progress on it like two years ago, and now it's just been stagnant for a while. Okay. Um, so moving on to uh, on to the third question here. Uh, so I guess uh, maybe maybe your most desired feature would be uh, some kind of agreement as to what it's going to be. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but I mean, if I so if I just present this question to Nikki first, I mean, do you have any particular feature? And that that could be pretty much anything. You know, maybe something to make your life as a viewer the better easier. And I, I think maybe you've already addressed that, or maybe some other kind of feature you think is 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 very could be very interesting and important in in virtual worlds. I don't have a specific feature. I think I, well, my point is, that, and I agree with Jessica, some sort of standard standards committee or standardization where a, a core open sound is going to present this particular thing and we're going to stick with it. You guys need a roadmap. Okay. Um, so, Lira, do, 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 do you agree with Jessica and Nikki or um, do you have any other thoughts? Yeah, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about last year. There needs to be like an organization of viewer developers and open sim developers working together, and then a really separation. Yeah, I, I, I so correct me if I'm wrong because I'm I'm really not so involved in this stuff. But I think there was a there's kind of talks about trying to get, get common things like a viewer mailing list in the past for all viewers, but it didn't really seem to work out. Uh, it didn't seem to work now. Right, and I think yeah. I mean, you know, I don't know what the answer is. Uh, it, it's it's obviously a challenge, and it's also, you know, we're at a time right now when um, open source developers really need to pull together now more than ever. I think and and come to an agreement, and it's but it's also a very difficult time to motivate open source developers, um, just with the way things are changing. You know, four or five years ago, virtual worlds was really exciting, and not to say it's not still exciting, but it's you know, the, the honeymoon is sort of worn off on people and um, and there's other emerging, te emerging technologies that are pulling people's interests away from uh, virtual worlds, I think. So motivating uh, developers is becoming a tougher, more challenging problem. Right, right. And I guess, you know, again, it comes maybe back to this communication divide. A lot of communication does go on in the IRC and I think maybe even more so in kind of open sim channels nowadays because, you know, that's kind of, maybe not neutral ground is the wrong word, but it's a place where it's easier to get viewer developers to go, I, it's my feeling. Um, but of course, you know, and that's not going to work for Firestorm. So, so you're right, I, I, do, I do agree. It's, it's very wobbly in terms of motivation and what people want to do and, and how, I don't know, how do we put all together? It's, that's a difficult question, certainly, but I, I appreciate what you're saying about the need for 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 um for things to be pretty not to vary too much not to, not to be widely different but to actually you know standard maybe a strong word i don't know but, but to actually have some kind of uniformity so i'm going to move on to my last question here here really just touches on what, what you said again a bit earlier because i think it's always a, a question on people's quite quite often on people's minds is that do you think that a web-based viewer is important um, and, and, and or feasible, of course? Is it, is it actually possible this time in, in terms of either performance or the amount of work one would have to do? Um, so I'm just going to continue as I was, I'm afraid, just for this last question. So, Nikki, um, uh, what would you say to that? Is, is, um, is a web viewer feasible or possible? I'm not qualified to even answer to that question because I haven't done web-based work myself in order to be intelligent enough to give a good answer to Okay, and, and Jessica, I think you've pretty much really... I, I, I can tell you what I think. Yeah, um, sure. I, I think that um, 
it may be the solution. Uh, I mean, let's face it. I, I, I actually said this to a friend of mine earlier today. You know, the viewer is kind of like a rotary phone now in, in its comparison to, you know, a smartphone. Uh, the viewer is getting old and clunky, and it's, I think we can all agree, it's, it's a big mess of spaghetti code. Um, and, you know, so a web-based client might be the answer, but, you know, we always get requests from people. Can't you make a... Uh, a basic version of Firestorm with just this feature, this feature, and that feature. And uh, yeah, we could do that. But the next person is going to want another set of features, and the person after that is going to want another set of features. And and so what is useful to me as a viewer is going to be different from what's useful to you or anybody else. So if somebody does do a web-based viewer, which won't be us because, like Nikki said, um, we don't have that expertise in, in, in that area. You know, my devs are C++ devs, and a web-based viewer would not be C++. Um, so there's a lot of challenges that need to be faced, and uh, I, I can't help but think, you know, we're reaching into a crunch time. Somebody needs to be doing something. Um, but, yeah, I don't know, motivation, all that stuff. Okay, and finally, Liru, uh, um, what do you think about web-based reviewers? Do I think they're important? Not so much, actually. I think that a lot can be accomplished, whether or not you use a web interface or just regular application. We have already phone applications. There's Lumia, and there's viewers for computers, so... We don't really need them. Are they feasible? Yeah, they're feasible, but I don't think they're needed. Because what we can do, even though the viewer code is getting old, we can totally rewrite it if we need to. We can make it customizable if we need to, or we've been working on that. We can do, we can do basically anything with the current code that we could do with a web viewer, perhaps some more, because there's just, just a lot more that you can do with the computer itself, working in C++, than you can do in, fi in the confines of the, the browser. So I feel like it's not so much important, but, but it would be kind of nice, but it's not, it's not an absolute solution. Okay. Um, so before we really go into the audience q and I just want to ask you, is there anything that you would particularly like to say to this audience or, or, or to the people here about, well, about any really topic, but I guess connected to the viewers, is there, is there any kind of any point you'd like to make or any closing remarks before we go into Q&A? Uh, Nikki? Uh, no, I don't have anything. Uh, Jessica? I have, um, I have a lot of respect for... Um Open sim and and in fact I, I'm sometimes uh, go up against uh, some of my own developers. Um, you know I, I think that it's just in my opinion that if if Second Life were to fail, um, Open sim would be the fallback, and um, it worries me some that. Um, like we've got, you know, these viewer difficulties and compatibility problems. That's not so much my concern. My concern is that is there an open sim grid? Um, capable and ready to, to take on an exodus of users should Second Life go south. And, um, and I, I worry that maybe there isn't. And so my concern is, I hope that OpenSim administrators can, um, you know, put together their roadmap, be prepared, because uh, when the time comes, if the time comes, everybody's going to have to be kind of on the same book and on the same page in the same book um, to... Uh, support, you know, a lot of people leaving uh, Second Life. I'm not convinced the new platform that Linen Lab is working on is going to be what we consider to be uh, Second Life. Um, and it may not be suitable for, you know, a good even half of the population of Second Life. So, it, you know, if that, if Second Life as we know it bellies up, not becomes not profitable or for whatever reason, um, OpenSim is the next closest thing. And I think that's where people are going to come. So basically, my the message I'm saying is, guys, and by guys, I mean all of you open sim administrators and developers. Um, you know, we as users may really need you guys to come together uh, in a very, very quick way. And I hope you guys are prepared to do that, or at least thinking about how you're going to get the infrastructure in place 
to be able to t take on, you know, a very big load of people very quickly. I think I have one thing to add, and that's a disaster that they deal with the delicious uh, bread. You, in it was very popular. I used OS grid regularly for testing because it's at the front edge of what OpenSIM was doing. But not to have a recovery plan just seems inexcusable. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, um, let me just uh, finally ask Lee, do, do you have anything, any kind of closing remarks you would like to give here? I don't have any closing remarks, no. Okay, well, well thank you already very much for, for kind of your questions. Now, I would like to take questions from the audience. I know I saw one earlier, and I've got to scroll back a little bit through. Uh, I know we had some technical difficulties earlier. Unfortunately, it looks like Cindy has not been able to make it back. Uh, I'm sure she's having some, probably I mentioned some network issues. Um, so really you've already, I'm, I'm taking this question from, from Matt, but I think you've already answered it in that, where do the panelists see the future of SL 1.0 going? Uh, will Linda Lab continue to support and develop it at all, or do you see a shorter term holding pattern support followed by the plug being pulled? I can only speculate, but I'd, I'm, I'd be willing to speculate. Sure, sure. Um, I think, and I don't think any of us really know, uh, but I, I think that um, Second Life 2.0, as we'll call it, there is no real name for it just yet, is, is probably going to be more uh, social media in a virtual world than what SL is. Um, and since they're planning on supporting uh, other platforms, um, it might be less graphical. I don't know. It's hard to say. Uh, as far as SL1, as we know it, um, I would, from a business point of view, I would suspect that, um, as Abby Linden has said, they, they want to make the new platform so good that people will want to leave Second Life and go to the new, new platform. Um, and uh, they will obviously, once that's been released, they'll be marketing the new platform, there'll be advertisements for it and all these things, and there'll be, be less information about Second Life 1.0, as we call it. And um, so, through attrition, uh, you know, the, I, I do believe Lynn and I will keep SL1 going as long as it's profitable. But I think through, through attrition and not being marketed um, by Lynn and Lab, gradually things may go down and it'll get to the point where it's no longer profitable. In which case, from a business point of view, it would only make sense for Lynn and Lab to shut it down and try, try to transition people to the new platform. And um, I hope that if that happens, it would be a slow, pro, a slow process. But... Um, uh, so I just think you know, open sim should feel uh, some pressure. Uh, open administ open sim administrators should have some pressure on their shoulders to, um, you know, be prepared for if that time comes. Okay, I I'm just gonna swap to a question uh, I saw from Walter elsewhere, where, and then I'm gonna go back to the main chat. In that, just following on, I'm sorry, I'm just jumped all over Le you, Leo. Sorry, I'm, and Nikki, I'm so sorry. Did you have any kind of like other points you, you would like to have made about that question? Um, I kind of forgot the question and all the commenting. Sorry, yeah, just to repeat, um, is that really it's about the exact question. The question was from Matt Harry is. Uh, where do you see the future of SL 1.0 going? Uh, do you think that we want to support and develop it at all, or would you feel the short term holding pattern followed by plug being pulled? And if it is the latter, will, will the for part of you as support shift towards support OpenSIM, or are they more likely to pull their own plugs? Well, as of, as I've seen so far, it was. A whole bunch of the Lindens had supposedly moved on to the new platform, but we keep seeing them come back and work on Second Life. So I don't think that the the new platform is going to be pulling away too many people. I think that it's just going to be like more of the same. Maybe some people try out the new platform, but since it's not going to be the same content, it's, it's, I don't think people are going to move, or be as willing to move. Okay, and, and Nikki, do you, do you have any uh, opinion on this topic? Yes, I have an opinion. Uh, second Life is the second life year. The pace of corrections 
and output has been very high. And in my opinion, is they're going to get all of the stuff fixed, and then and as soon as the things are going in to the present second in life, it's going to be a test round, and then it will dovetail into the new platform. Okay, interesting. So, so just to come on to, I mean, we're kind of coming up to time here, but uh, just a quick question I had from Walter is, um, and really, I think this is particularly for you. So we're going through this fairly quickly, Jessica, is that, and I think we've already talked about this, is what can we, we do to assist Firestorm in continuing compatibility with Open Simulator? Is it going to take, say, donations, maybe monetary to Firestorm, or is it really, as you maybe you said, conversations with grid owners and, and maybe the dev team? Uh, you know, would it be helpful? And I don't know how these things can be difficult to organize. And really, this is this is the point at which we have these conversations. But would it be helpful to kind of have a have some way of having a conversation about this? Um, yeah, so I think um, you know this this AIS v three thing and, and losing legacy baking is going to be a you know one challenge. But it's in a big challenge. But it's I think it sort of sits on its own. Um, and I'll we'll manage. We'll get I'll get around it. I'll find a developer who will um, you know merge in legacy baking back in. It's possible that I, I might have to do, uh, go with a bounty and offer a bounty to get that code back in. Um, again, it's you know I just have a problem with motivating my own developers right now because yeah. they, they sort of feel outed and slighted in in some ways, and and I can understand that. Um, and uh, communication, obviously, is really important. And, you know, I noticed that Nebadon said that he won't do business through email. The email is just a starter. You know, once we, I get your email and we'll, we'll have a short reply, I'll get you hooked up in Skype with me and, and we can sit and chat and talk all we need. And, and I'm more than happy to come into the grids as well, as, as I often do. Uh, I think communication. It's It really, yes. we need to see communication. I need... I need my developers just to see that they're appreciated. Um, Singularity devs know that, that they've got a lot of support here in OpenSim, um, whereas my devs, you know, we rarely ever hear um, from OpenSim folks. And okay. so, yeah. No, that's a really good point. I mean, it really does sound like, yeah, as you say, knowing that there really are people in OpenSim who, who support it and, you know, would really like to, to, to see Firestorm continue to support. So maybe... We can work towards that, as you say. If, if email is the first, Skype it tends to be more of a common ground. I have to say, a lot of communication. Skype isn't ideal for me because I, I much prefer seeing stuff in IRC where it's completely public and people can see whatever is happening. Oh yeah, I'm good with that. The problem with um, IRC is that I found is that you don't have a history that you can go back and, and see it. So if I'm away, um, you know, I'm going to miss things. Right. So yeah, just to um. So yeah, we're coming up to time. I'm going to take a final question, and um, I'm really going to take it from serendipity here, because again, this relates upon how can we be better support the viewers or get a better um, kind of better get a get better development there. So his question is, um, how does this a good program get started in viewer work? Uh, what are the best starting points? Uh, he says he doesn't see many overall dev docs, and has he simply missed them? Um, so maybe again, if I can start with Nuni you know, Nikki on that question. Uh, how, how does a good programmer get started in viewer development work? Uh, the uh, Second Life wiki for uh, building on the DS20 pin is, is very detailed and good, and that can get you started. Now, if that's not your preferred language, then uh, the Linux wiki is not quite as good, but the curve to get into building Linux is, is in my opinion, easier. Uh, if you want to start building it, contact me offline because I sure need some help. Right, right. So just to repeat what Nikki said, yeah, if anybody wants to kind of start working or, or building, I think you're saying, Nikki, right, is to contact you and just go from there. Yes. And, and I guess, <laughs> yeah, not anybody's competing with developers or anything, but I mean, Jessica, do you, do you have a, a comment on, on that, on, on how is, does a developer get started? How can they help? We have a um, wiki page. I'm just pulling it up here. And my devs have gone through great painstaking effort to make a, a very comprehensive guide on how to compile Firestorm. Um, and in fact, actually, it's more it's more about building, uh, setting up your build environment, uh, which, you know, that's the hardest thing, like getting your 
computer set up to to do a compile. Compiling the viewer is incredibly complicated. Um, once you're set up with that and you've successfully compiled, and by the way, that guide works the same for um, the Linux viewer, I believe, as well as I think pretty much any viewer for that matter. Um, and um, basically, if you want to be a dev for the Firestorm team, what we ask is uh, take a look on our Jira. We've got a lot of bugs. We've, we've got a lot of feature requests. We've got a lot of a lot of things. Um, pick something that interests you. Compile Firestorm. Um, resolve that Jira. Submit it to us as, as, a, contri as, as a contribution. Uh, and um, basically, uh, this is how we recruit anybody on the team, and it goes the same with our support team. Um, and, uh, you know, once we see that, because if, if I had a dime for every person that's come and said that they, you know, are, are a developer and they can do things, but in the end, they don't even know how to compile anything. Um, so we sort of need to see examples of your work. And so when I say uh, contribute code, I mean, give us a few examples of your work compiled against Firestorm that we can take and, and, and introduce into um, our repository and it becomes a point where it doesn't make sense for us to not recruit you as a developer on the team and we are always looking for developers always okay and and Liru um, how, how, how can somebody best get started in the field of development or maybe in general or singularity in particular well for singularity in particular I generally recommend that you join the IRC channel on Freenode it's uh, it's Singularity Viewer, one word, no underscores. And um, basically, if you arrive there, you ask for help, or I'll probably say hi anyway, because I say hi to people who I haven't seen before, or I just don't remember seeing. Um, and I'll find out what you want, what you need to do. And I've been around the viewer source a while, and a lot of other people in the channel are there to help too, even if I haven't been around. And there's, we also, since uh, Jess linked her pages, I'll link mine. We've got those three pages, which have been written based on building the viewer. I wrote the uh, first two, and the last was written by Latif, who couldn't be here today. Um, and um, so basically, just asking for help. And sitting in the channel and trying, just looking at it. And if you need any help, if you want to do something, we can work with you. We can figure it out, and we can get things done. But you can basically do anything. That's that's it. Great. Well, we've run out of time here. So thanks very much to all our panelists. And obviously, a lot to think about there in terms of the view of development. And hopefully, we can. Uh, we can get some improvements on that front. I know it's difficult, but you know there's quite a few of us now, so so, so hopefully we can all work together and, and get something uh, going there. So again, thank you very much, and please give our panelists a round of applause. So.